On today's show, we're headed to America's historic Bob White Quail Country in search of wild cubbies. Good shot. Oh, almost forgot. Georgia also grows big bass, so we traded shotguns for fishing rods and went nose to nose with Georgia Hall. Oh, that's a big fish. Those stories and more next. Oh! <laughs> Minnesota Bound. Brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC Dealers. Hi, everybody. Raven and I welcome you to the show. You know, in Minnesota, we have lots of outdoor traditions deer opener, walleye opener, pheasant opener, you name it. But I was recently invited to go to Georgia and North Florida to celebrate one of their traditions the pursuit of Bob White Quail. Hunting the Bob White Quail. This is America's Upland Game Bird. The Bob White is born and bred. Booster! While the ringneck pheasant may be more colorful, it's an American alien. Booster! Imported from the Orient. But Mr. Bob White, well, old Bob represents the hunting heart of America's South. It's a southern tradition, rich in history. It's a bird hunted by presidents and cherished by generations of bird dog devotees. But time has not stood still in the Old South. A few plantations may remain, but Georgia's fame for wild quail hunting has faded away like the shadows under a live oak tree, which brings us here. Here to Southwest Georgia, to a place called Blue Springs Plantation. My grandfather actually bought this piece of property back in 1962. Uh, my great-grandfather was a very avid quail hunter, all about conservation, preservation, and loved to entertain guests. Meet Hunter Mountcastle. The passion for quail hunting runs in his veins, too. But here on the plantation, Hunter has another goal, to keep alive those wild quail hunting traditions from yesteryear. This is Alice. You could say a quail hunting mule. And Alice is going to be part of our story. Ready, Alice? Just take that in and got to move on. We got But on this day, with hunters on Tennessee walkers, or riding in a mule-drawn wagon led by far-roaming pointers, the pursuit of wild quail is like a page from another time. You kind of handle the horses? Oh, it's a good mules here. Didn't like them at first, but now I sort of enjoy it. They always say a mule sort of a dumb animal, but that's not true. But it doesn't take long to find the first covey. Nothing to this. <laughs> Two shots, no quail. I was feeling sorry for the quail. No more. Time to keep going. Next point, hopefully, coming up. What's that up? Get one, Tommy. Uh, what did we will too. Birds are safe today. <laughs> so you lose a few. <laughs> right. Look at all them birds. Nice shot, Rod. Nothing to this game. And you win a few. Just what hunting should be about. One thing about quail hunting, like any, any upland bird hunting, is a lot of anticipation. So you follow these pointers, they point, they run, they point, they run, and you never know when they're gonna explode. Uh, I mean, that's the magic of it all. Yet this place is about more than hunting wild quail. It's also about producing wild quail. Hunter explains. Growing up, you know, in the quail woods, it was something that, you know, I wanted to learn how to get in there and drive the tractors, and I wanted to learn how to, to get more birds, where we could do more hunting, and, you know, how to make things, things better for the future generations. There's definitely room to grow, you know, definitely more habitat that we can, you know, always increase and 
trying to supplement, you know, uh, whatever we can, you know, to make sure that the quail are here for the future. So here at Blue Springs, the hopes are many. Hope to increase wild quail, hope to preserve quail hunting traditions, and hope the South forever is known as the capital of America's quail country. Be ready. I'm ready. Coming up, the dogs are on point and the wild quail are flying, all in a day's work in South Georgia. Good shot. Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Minnesota Select GMC dealers. Ellsworth Creamery. Rapala Ice Force. And by Border View Lodge. to resume our Georgia quail adventure. This time we're going north of Atlanta to a place called Spring Bank. In Georgia, quail hunting and bird dogs are like birds of a feather. This time at a hunting preserve called Spring Bank, just north of Atlanta. Joining me was Talbot Parton, the Quail Forever organization. All right, Lyle, I understand you have a surprise for me here, huh? I sure do, Ron. I'd like you to meet my dog. Oh, really? All oh, Black Lab. This yeah. Is, this is Miss Raven. You're kidding me. This is Raven. Oh, Raven, come here, baby. Lyle is Lyle McClure, manager at Spring Bank where wild quail are encouraged and released quail are hunted. You have a couple of setters here, huh? Two setters, got Molly and Trooper. Minutes later, Molly and Trooper were on point. All right, fellas, be ready. Find them. Find them. That's one of the ones you shot at that peeled right. Well, that makes me feel better. Hey, I hit one. Hell, I'm better than I thought I was. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Now, me hitting a quail wasn't the only strange sight. What's going on there? It's got to be in that tree. Serious? Really? Is there a quail in that yeah, tree? Yeah, it's sitting right there in the tree. God, I don't think I've ever seen that. Fellas, I don't believe the dog's going to be able to get up there to flush this one out. If, if y'all want to get a... Get on either side, I'm gonna shake it out like a squirrel. As the morning heated up, so did the action. Be ready. I'm ready. Kill it. Good shot. Good shot. Wow, that bird's got nine lives. While the released birds serve a purpose, Lyle also works the land to aid wild quail. You can kind of take a look around and see that the way we've actually did the plantation cut on the pines. It's, you've got areas where we've got dense woods and down in the draws it provides cover, but out in the fields we've actually got it opened up, so uh, it provides the quail with the right type of habitat that they need. Later, we were joined by another bird dog zealot, Jim Hardy. You ready, guys? Nice. Good shot. Is that you, Ron? You know, when I shoot, something always falls. You know that. <laughs> we were enjoying the hunt for sure, but the dogs, well, the dogs seem to be having the most fun. Atta girl. Come on, fetch him up. Look, look at that, it, look how pretty that is. It is gorgeous. The yeah. bird right in front of her on the ground. Oh Isn't my. That? If quail hunting is to persevere in America South, those bird dogs may get the credit. After all, it's the point that matters. It's the point we anticipate. It's the point that keeps us all coming back. Up next, we go afield with quail research biologists seeking answers to the life and times of wild bobwhite quail. Got a girl. Closed captioning from Minnesota Bound is brought to you by 
Radco Truck Accessories. Welcome back to our quail adventure. This time we're going to visit a quail research station trying to solve one of the great mysteries in America, what's happened to wild quail in the southeast part of the United States. The decline of wild quail in America's south didn't just happen overnight. While many hunters have their own theories, most everyone agrees. The more we know about wild quail, the better their future. Tall Timbers Wildlife Research Station. This place is unique for a couple of reasons. One, it's one of the few privately funded wildlife research operations in the United States. And two, if we're to win the battle of restoring wild quail populations in southeast United States, what happens here may be the reason why. Meet Theron Terhune, Gamebird Research Director. Theron and others, such as master's student Seth Woods, conduct almost daily inquiries into the lives of quail. And we know very little about um, chicks from the time they're born to about four months of age. And so that's my goal in the next 10 years, is to know as much about quail chicks as we know about the rest of the bird. One researcher tool is radio telemetry, following birds tagged with radio transmitters to monitor movements in habitat. I have a particular covey radio tag up here further towards the lake. I can determine whether or not they're moving, and so therefore I can determine their behavior. I only have one, uh, one bird radio tagged in these coveys. Well over 200,000 locations um, in our database. If I'm Minutes later, the radio cubby decides to skedaddle. That a girl. Theron shoots up in the air, not at the birds, but just to please his dog. While the researchers don't hunt radioed cubbies, Theron does hunt unmarked quail for other research reasons. She's tracking them right there. you get? Banded bird. Banded? Yes, sir. So what will you, you, you'll learn now? Yeah, so we can tell the way that we ban these. We have uh, six digits, but so this one's 1-4, one so it was banded in 2014 of last year. And 140080 is probably banded in January because it's one of the first in the string. What would be a really old quail? Well, it's uh, funny that you asked that. We, you know, we have a saying that um, a one-year-old quail has been dead for quite some time. <laughs> the life expectancy of a quail is about seven months. Making it to a year is doing pretty good. Right. And so this guy is, you know, going on two years, so that's really good. You got lucky until um, he ran into you. While the answers to quail mysteries are slow to come, research here at Tall Timbers has discovered one major cause of the quail decline. When I say uh, Smokey the Bear, what comes to your mind? Smokey the Bandit. Why? Because he got away with a message. That message was fire is bad. But quail scientists at Tall Timber, such as Herbert Stoddard, discovered that fire is indeed needed by wild quail. One of the things that he learned early on is that quail need fire. You can have fire and not have quail, but you can't have quail without fire. The big questions are with with all the increased urbanization and expansion of the human population, how do we still apply fire on the landscape in order to bring back the quail that needs fire? Here on my left is a forest that hasn't been burnt for a whole long time, and it's not good quail habitat. Over here, this woods has been burned even just a year ago, and it is ideal habitat for quail. So now, this burning question. Does optimism fly in the minds of quail scientists today? As long as we can put fire back on the landscape and do the right management, I think that we have a shot to bring back quail in a lot of different places. I remain very optimistic that we can bring back quail. Okay, okay. So much to do, so little time. So we take a break from quail hunting to test the waters in a Georgia farm pond. Was that a tug on the end of my line? Oh my yes, sir. Big fish. Oh. 
Minnesota Bound, brought to you by Connecticut. Totem Resorts, Maui Gym Sunglasses, and by Evan Root, the official outboard motor of Minnesota Bound. Time now for the conclusion of our quail adventure as we spend a day with a young man who works for Quail Forever trying to bring back wild quail in that part of the country. Surprisingly, the headquarters for Quail Forever is right here in the Twin Cities. If you're wondering, will there be another generation of quail hunters, this is your answer. We'll cut up this way and move the hillside. Meet Talbot Park, young, optimistic, and crazy. Oh, crazy about quail and his bird dog, Bell. Come on, Bell. Okay, okay. Great shot, Ross. We doubled. It's just uh, flying feathers here. Release that bird. As a regional representative for Quail Forever, Talbot quit a high paying job to devote his energy to his quail passion. We've started um, about 14 new chapters, and we just had great growth. People have maybe never even been quail hunting or getting involved. I'm 100% an optimist. I believe that we're not only can we bring back quail, we're already starting to. And proof was in the air. Get him up. Mark them. We've got more in here. Great shooting. Thank you, bud. Wasn't so good on the first shot, but it was pretty good on the second shot. Well, we both got a bird. You can't ask for more than that. With our quail itch scratched, Talbot suggested more Georgia hospitality. He happened to know of a small lake full of dumb bass. You can't ask for more than that either. Is it Georgia tackle box? Yes, sir. Well, you know, when you're done quail hunting, you want to catch a few fish? Absolutely. You don't need a fancy tackle box. No. There you go. I'm ready. <laughs> Armed with a minimum of bass worms, we started casting. You know, it's deeper closer to that bank than it looks. We got some we got some fish working right up in here. Bingo. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Right, baby, fight. Flip it, flip it. Flip it there. Yeah. Nice, nice, nice. Georgia on my mind. <laughs> Thank you, buddy. Then suddenly, a Georgia hog. Oh my gosh. That is a big fish. Oh. Oh. Oh, that's a big fish. Grab her lower lip. Oh! Ho ho! You! Ten pound bass. Look at that! Let me tell you, the fight, I, I thought I had the bottom. I mean, but oh, I, I'm so lucky to get her in. There's so much grass and stuff. But oh, honey, thank you very much for that game. Oh. Georgia quail. And Georgia this bass. A little bigger mama. Look at that! <laughs> Two reasons why Georgia is always on your mind. Wild quail, I wish them luck trying to bring back that bird. Interestingly, Minnesota is trying to restore the quail in the southeast part of our state. Well, that about does it for us. Remember, introduce a kid to the great outdoors. I'm Ron Shera, and of course, always the star of the show, and I think a quail dog is Raven. Transportation provided by Premier Transportation. Call 1-800-899-7433. For more information on these stories and more, 
Catch us on the web at mnbound.com. Share your stories on the Minnesota Bound Facebook page under the Share Your Story tab.